So hello guys, now we're going to do a chapter 8 Subnetting IP Networks. Uh, this is a summary of version 2.0 and I hope you learned something from it. And let's go. So in this chapter for summary, we're going to uh, backtrack from the uh, what sections of this activity so this chapter the sections are subnetting an IPv4 network and addressing schemes design consideration for IPv6 so the section one uh, subnetting an IPv4 network so it's explain how subnetting segments a network to enable better communication Explain how to calculate a BB4 subnets for a 24 prefix and explain how to calculate a BB4 subnets for a 16 and 8 prefix and given a set of requirements for subnetting implement an IPv4 scheme. So first is network segmentation. So there are broadcast domains. So each router interface connect a broadcast domain. And broadcasts are only propagated with its specific broadcast domain. So there are problems with large broadcast domain, guys. So slow network operation due to the significant amount of broadcast traffic. The next one is slow device operation because a device must accept and process each broadcast packet. So, problems with large broadcast domains is solution reduce the size of the network create similar broadcast domains in a process called subnetting and these smaller network spaces are called subnets. So, guys, there are always reasons for subnetting. So, network administrators can group devices and services into subnet that are determined by location so another reason is network administration can group device and services into subnets that are determined by organization unit reasons network administration can group devices and services into subnet that are determined by device type so in subnetting IPv4, octet boundaries also guys are important. Okay, class less subnetting example is in the chapter 8. So guys, you can go back from there to, or you can watch my tutorial about it. So creating subnets. So the subnetting a pre 16 and 8 prefix so guys it is all about all the goods and bads about the chapter 8 about the subnetting or how you can uh, know how the network portion the host portion and the data set decimal so network requirement example is also so the traditional subnetting with addresses and the traditional subnetting waste addresses also what is a vlsm in practice you can see that in the chapter 8 so in 8.2 schemes upon completion on this section you should be able to implement a vlsm addressing scheme so network address planning so planning requires decision in each subnet in terms of size, the number of hosts per subnet, and how host addresses will be assigned. So planning to address network, primary consideration when planning address allocation. First is prevent duplication of address and monitor security and performance and provide and control access. Design and consideration for IPv6 and the IPv6 global unicast address. So, guys, uh, normally IPv6 global unicast address 
normally consists of a 48 global routing free switch, a 16-bit subnet ID, and a 64-bit interface ID. So, subnetting using the subnet ID, subnet allocation, and address block, and pub IPv6 allocation also is in there. So, guys, the chapter objectives is that implement an IPv4 addressing scheme to enable end-to-end -end connectivity in a small to medium-sized business network. Given a set of requirements, implement a VLSM addressing scheme to provide connectivity to end user in a small to medium-sized network. So, explain a design consideration for implementing IPv6 in a, in a business network. So, in some of the subnetting IP networks, the our <coughs> Our summary for that is the process of segmenting a network by dividing it into multiple smaller network. It is phases is called subnetting and every network address has a valid range of host addresses. So all devices attached to the same network will have an IPv4 address. For that network and a common subnet mask or network prefix, traffic can be forwarded between hosts directly if they are on the same subnet traffic, cannot be forwarded between subnets without the use of a router. To determine if it is traffic is local or remote, the router uses the subnet mask. The prefix and the subnet mask are different ways of representing the same thing. The network portion of an address is IPv4. Subnets are created by using one or more of the host bits as network bits to every important factors that will lead to the determination of the IP address. Uh, block with the subnet are the number of the subnet requires and the maximum minimum number of hosts needed per subnet. There is an inverse relationship between the number of the subnets and the number of the hosts. So the more bits that are borrowed to the create subnets, the fewer host bits are available. Therefore, they are fewer hosts per subnet. So also there are formula of two raise n where is the n is the number of the bits remaining is used to calculate how many addresses will be available on each subnet. However, the network address and broadcast address within a range are not usable. Therefore, the calculate the unusable number of addresses the calculation two raise n minus two is required. So, subnetting a subnet or using variable length subnet mass of VLSM was designed to avoid wasting addresses. So, again, IPv6 subnetting requires a different approach. The IPv4 subnetting and IPv4 6 address space is not subnetted to conserve address, rather it is subnet so, a network it is a heretical, logical design of the network. So, while IPv4 subnetting is about to managing address scarcity, IPv6 subnetting is about building a addressing hierarchy based on the number of routers and the network they support. So guys, careful on planning is required to make best use of the available space of addresses, size, location, and use and access requirements are all considerations. So, in the address planning process, after it Im is implemented, an IP network needs to 
be tested and verify connectivity and operational performance. So guys, that is all about chapter 8, subnetting IP networks. Hope you learn more and that is all and thank you.